watch this video and then we'll talk. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? So for those of you who might not have caught that, let me just rehash. So that was a video of a woman who just finished the marathon and she was getting ready to cross the finish line. Just a few, just a few meters in front of the finish line is her husband and her two children, two small children. He brought them before the finish line, put them into the race in the path of mom who was so close to finishing and then mom had to go around the kids and then she crossed the finish line and i don't know if she beat her time but in the very least she completed it and she's very clearly proud of this accomplishment what also was happening if you go back and look in that in this little corner where where the booga and the babies are is that the kids are confused and the dad is trying to solicit um He's trying to solicit, what is that emotion? One sec. Some compassion, some woe is me, some can you believe what she did to the other people that are in front of the finish line? Now, there's so many things wrong with this, and I've seen a couple of people talk about this, but I wanna do, I wanna talk a little bit more about this. Also, for those of you who are new here, hi, my name is Shayna, I'm a journalist. I also talk a lot about decentering men, child-free living, all of that stuff on here. So if that sounds like a vibe, please like, share, subscribe, all that great stuff. If you're curious about the articles that I've written, head over to my website, it's on my description page, bio, whatever. Um, but let's dive back into this. And I have to bring out the handy dandy notebook for this so I don't lose anything. Imagine training. Imagine training for a marathon. Do you know how many months of training it takes? Do you know how much you have to... It's a skill. It is a compounded skill. Your diet changes. The way that you exercise changes. The way that you... Like the amount of sleep that you need changes. The way that you work around your schedule. Everything has to change for you to be able to train correctly so not just so that way you could beat your time but just so that way that you could finish and not hurt yourself i have friends who have done marathons who do marathons very competitively um actually i actually have one friend that does triathlons how she does it i don't i don't know but she's getting sponsored at this point which is fantastic go chelsea um and i could not imagine somebody that is supposed to be her number one cheerleader, her boyfriend, who I actually knew before I met Chelsea. Um, arguably, I'm the reason that they met. And when they get married, I need to be invited to that wedding, but that's besides the point. That's besides the point. I'm saying that if her boyfriend, the person that has been all along, that has been intimately watching her train for this, sabotaged her a few feet before the finish line, I would say, that he hates her. I would say that if somebody were to try and sabotage you at, at the finish line of a huge life achievement, that that person is an op. That person is against you. That person is your personalized demon. And there's a couple of levels of the danger that he put. It's, it's the damage and the danger that he did to those kids in that moment right i'm gonna put the woman that accomplished all of this aside because we gotta secure the babies i'm i'm proactively child free but one thing about me i love kids i love kids so much that i'm not having any so let's talk about the babies that he brought into this because it'd be one thing if he was just the villain but no he actually caused he tried to put them in danger and created long-term damage for these babies so let's dive into that one he put them in and the most obvious he put them in physical danger marathon running you enter a zone and mind you yes mom sees those babies because mom got that sense she goes oh my god my babies are in the area let me scooch around other people that are zoned out blacked out they see the finish line and nothing else you could get trampled those tiny babies could have gotten trampled they could have gotten side swapped they could have gotten cut they could have got a bunch of things could have happened a pile up could have happened on those babies because he couldn't wait until after she crossed the finish line, like 10 feet down the, down the street. It don't make no sense. 
And this part, which I think is the more insidious part that he probably thought of in, at some recess of, of his fractional brain, right? He set, he set them up, the babies, to think that mom abandoned them for following her dreams. Those babies think, why didn't mom see me? Why didn't mom hug me? My, why didn't mom say hello? Why didn't she wave? And then dad's reaction confirms that feeling that he wants those babies to feel, which is your mom abandoned you. But I'm always going to be here. But also he's not always going to be there because he made it about that. He made it about him. He went to the other grownups to be like, can you believe this woman? He didn't go to the babies. I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I didn't even see him try to secure the babies. Hey, okay, let's get back onto the sideline. He went straight to the other adults to be like, can you believe she did this to me? Meanwhile, babies are confused. Maybe even a little bit traumatized about the whole experience because there's a lot of grownups. There's a lot of screaming. There's a lot of yelling. And they were just looking for mom. And this is no hate to the mom. Mom came out with a mission. Arguably, mom told them, wait for me behind the finish line. I don't know a single person that would want their family to be in front of the finish line in the middle of the race. It don't make no, it don't make no sense. And now we're getting into the long term damage that this father is doing to his kids because he is his wife's op. Let me just. He shows them, the kids, what would happen to their loved ones if they commit to following their dreams. Remember that feeling that you had when your mom didn't, and he doesn't even have to say this anymore because now it's just in the body. Remember that feeling that you had when you really wanted a hug from your mom and she went and completed and finished her dream, accomplished a goal. Remember how lonely that was? Remember how scared and confused you were? You don't want to feel like that ever again. You don't want to make somebody else feel like that, do you? So make your dreams manageable, pliable, um, amendable to other people inserting themselves into it and then you accommodating their insertion into your dreams. It's insidious and it's effective. And to lighten the mood a little bit, but also further the conversation, I'm gonna close off with this video. Great, congratulations. Can we go home now? I'd really like to go home. Can we go home now, please? Because I'm embarrassed. You ran around me. How would I not be embarrassed? I was just trying to hug you. I didn't want to hug you after the race. Because it wouldn't be special. Everyone was hugging you after the race. Your family, your friends, and that guy. Who's that guy? Why would he hug you if he was behind you? That doesn't... <sighs> Great. So the guy who gets in second place gets to hug you, but not me. That's, that's just wonderful. Winning isn't everything. Obviously, it's more important than our relationship. I just don't get it. You think you're like Usain Bolt or something. You do this for fun. I should matter more. Isn't it accurate? And well, ain't that a kick in the head? I need to finish packing, but I wanted to leave you with that. So if you have any thoughts and continuations of this conversation, please type them in the comment section. Um, and I will talk to you all later. All right. Bye.